Oh, it's my turn. All right, we are, we are now live. Okay, Barb. All right, Tom? Yep. Jason? Yep. Beth? Dave? Here. Oh. Sean? Here. Annette? Here. Tondra? Here. Uh, myself is here. Larry? Tom? Uh, Horseman? Yes. Okay. Sherry? Tondra? Here. Bernie? Bernie's supposed to be here. Okay. Actually, he's walking in right now. Okay. And this is my last one. Debbie. Here. All right. <laughs> Looking over March's minutes. Let's sit up at the big table. There you go. Okay. Thank you. I move. Have a second. A second, Dave. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay, yes. Yes. Good. Yep. All right, Dave. All right. business. Spring camp follow-up. Spring break camp follow-up. So um, <laughs> we were able to not cancel any of our spring break dates out at Mill School and Tondra can follow up on since we had to cancel three dates of our winter break camp just right <laughs> so you want to talk about how how that went yeah spring break camp was amazing um and I stated somewhere in the meeting earlier this week I don't know but it was God's grace and mercy that we pulled that together by being in that building so just few days before we had actually had 109 kids totally registered and an average of 84 kids a day show up for the three days. They had an amazing time. We had a variety of activities for them to do and everyone absolutely <coughs> loved the, uh, the space. Uh, we did get a great day. The last day on the, th uh, the 30th, the weather was nice so we were able to bring the kids outside on the playground and it was, it was pretty cool to be out there. So they're looking forward to. And who provided lunches for the three days? So our lunches, shout out to uh, Chick-fil-A, the um, cow made a visit. <laughs> and then we had the taco bus, and they had walking tacos the second day. And the third day, we had Pizza House East uh, provide the pizza. So a shout out to Ogo for all the snacks that they provided, and all our volunteers and, and everybody that helped uh, present to these kids. So be Rick, Rick Sosa, Ricky Sosa. Ricky Sosa is the taco bus. Dave Baumgartner. Dave Baumgartner and is Tim Chick Perry, who Tim is great. At he's Pizza amazing. Pizza House East, yep. Great. And we look forward to s talking about summer break camp later on in the mm -hmm. meeting. Um, and then Midtown Supper Club and Tap Pit. Yep. <coughs> Midtown Supper Club started um, this is their second week, and the, we had a total, we had two classes, 12 in the first class, 13 in the uh, second class, uh, Mondays and Tuesdays. Uh, Chef Brad Kraft from Sandusky City Schools and Benny V, Benny Vito from Zupa Man are our chefs um, training these special little humans, these skills. They did knife skills yesterday with Benny V and it was, it was incredible. Like these kids are, you know, that's the beauty of having an interest based program because they're all, you know, nobody's playing around. Nobody's, you know, I'm bored. They really want to know about culinary. So this is a, um, a great season for them. And, and we're going to move into possibly doing a midtown summer supper club, but we haven't shook those details out yet. Tap Fit with Tondra started yesterday, and that was, uh, we have 23 registered ages 7 to 81 for that class. Um, we had about 18 show up yesterday. Um, we should expect to have a full class tomorrow, and it was, yeah, it hasn't, we, we haven't tap fitted since December of 21, and it showed yesterday. <laughs> but 
it, once we get started, you know, we got a great, great vibe and a great tribe. So we're excited about that. Great. Yes. Good question. Sure. Tony, the Midtown Summer Club is two different, like some of them are like year two, right? Or some of them? Oh, no, we have, we have one that is a, from the 2018. So she's a four year uh, participant. Then we have some three year participants okay. and some two years is so there. And then we have this, this the year. Group. Yep. This okay. is our fourth year. So it's, it's right. pretty, uh, and like I said, they're, they're helping each other. The ones that have been in there longer are helping the newer ones and. Yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty incredible. You guys should stop by and see. Um, yeah, I knew you had some returners. I just didn't know yep. how many. Thank you. You're welcome. And the space has been perfect because the kitchen with the, the kitchen extra is perfect. Brad additional. knows the kitchen. Benny knows the kitchen. It's just it's just perfect. We've got a classroom that they do their uh, educational pieces at, and have lunches provided by Sandusky <laughs> City Schools. Well, dinner Dude. provided every day. So. All right, and right across the street, there's a golf course that's been there for a few years. <laughs> um, and that you want to give an update on? Sure. Uh, Butch Wagner Memorial Tournament, May Saturday, May 21st, with Sunday, May 22nd as a rain date. We did add an additional flight. So we are adding an afternoon flight because we have filled the morning flight. Um, I already have four teams committed to the afternoon flight. So I'm looking at taking um, 15 teams per flight. And then we'll do a winner for flight A and a winner for flight B. So we're, we're real excited with that. Um, if anybody wants to make, obviously this is a fundraiser in memory of Butch. And any, any um, donations can be directed right to the family. Uh, I, will, I can get anybody uh, Brian's uh, email address as Brian, their, Butch's son, is taking care of all sponsorships and donations. Um, Hall of Fame inductions, that will be that same weekend. It looks like we're probably going to push that back to Sunday since we do have a full slate on Saturday. We will be taking nominations through May 1st, and then um, we'll have a committee that will go ahead and select the individual who will be inducted. Uh, so nominations can be completed at the clubhouse. They're right on the front counter. There's a ballot and a box that those can be dropped in. And the course is green. Course is real is in green is green. It's actually course is in nice shape. Uh, we've been fortunate enough. There's not been huge downpours. We do have our soft spots two, three, and nine are soft, but the rest of the course is in really good shape. Thanks. I think that's going to be a fun-filled weekend. Yeah, a little crazy that weekend. All over the town. All over town. Um, just a quick Ironman update. The um, planning group that comes in each month is going to be in on uh, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, we have another downtown merchant meeting at 4 o'clock on Monday to engage the downtown merchants on how they can help support the event and get some people into their businesses during that weekend in July. Um, we're also doing like an all agency, which is a, basically a safety meeting on uh, the different courses. They haven't finalized. They finalized the bike course, which basically goes out Tiffin to um, the Clyde area in Sandusky County. So we're working with Sheriff Hilton in Sandusky County. But the swim and the bike are, or swim and the run portions of the event are still uh, in in planning. Um, so that's that was just a quick Ironman update. Jason, where's that bike route? You said the Clyde route? Huh? Yeah, the bike route goes uh, out, I believe, Bardshar, and then it gets into Sandusky County. It passes Firelands Winery. That's basically the limit. Okay. And then, yeah, there's a lot of rural roads out there that, um, and we've, uh, I've already seen people uh, that I know that are doing the event that are out there trying the course or biking the course. So they'll do the same when the run is released. How many total miles is that? 56 mile bike. And they're up to about, I'd say 1,900 participants right so now. So I don't need to sign up then. <laughs> no. I don't need you, David. <laughs> you waiting a day for me. <laughs> wow. Okay. Any questions on the old business and updates? Right. Uh, new business, as we've discussed, that we are now uh, doing programming out of middle school as of uh, spring break camp, but the official lease started April 1st. Um, we are in the process of getting things moved over there. Uh, we have uh, the, the library has been converted over to our new rec room, which is 
just going to be a great space. Uh, the kitchen's already been used. The gym fit 24 participants pretty easily in the gym. I think we can go up to 30 maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we can. Um, we asked the rec board uh, if, if you have time after this, we we're going to caravan over there and, and look at the space. Um, but uh, we're, we're planning on our summer programming uh, getting in there, which includes a couple things, uh, one that Tondra's putting together and the other one that Annette has been spearheading. So summer break camp, if you want to talk a little bit about that. Yep, so summer break camp. So um, being in a space that has uh, the ability to have multiple programming at the same time is amazing. We'll have Midtown Supper, Summer Supper Club will be happening. Um, in June, tap fit will still continue, make it so easy. Um, the um, seamstress program is going to move over to meals. Um, we have diversity dance. We have snap ed that's through uh, Ohio State University Extension. Uh, we're calling it eating good in the neighborhood because nutrition education was not <laughs> Kid friendly, they didn't like that. So, <laughs> if you say eating good in the neighborhood, they might want to be like, "Yeah, let's go check it out." Uh, Tender has braiding um, uh, instruction. Uh, we have Ohio State University again, 4-H Club. I I Movies Create Studio. We have a Walk in Confidence. We have a Yo Yo Ma Bach and Sandusky Young Poets program. Um, Ms. Jennifer Ashburn is going to be doing that. Uh, the Erie Metro Parks is bringing a brand new uh, program. It's called Now uh, Nature on Wheels. So they are able to be mobile, and they're going to be bringing that. And we have a really, really, we're really excited to have Cass Masterpolis um, doing a uh, football soccer skills camp. And then Daryl Murphy has, uh, um, I had spoken with him. Um, he's entertaining doing a uh, intro to golf uh, camp at some point. We're working on that. And all that's going to be happening. Plus the just free play outside in the park. The rec room has plenty of board games. And, you know, I just bought a bunch of jacks. If anybody remembers jacks, I was playing with some jacks with a little girl the other day. And uh, they were just the big rubber kind that I have no idea about. So the real jacks, the little medals, yeah, we're gonna have a check. We're gonna have a tournament. As long <laughs> so, as you say jacks and not jarts. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. So that's the summer. Oh, and then on July 21st, if you would like to come by, the ODNR, Ohio Department of Natural Resources, will be coming to do a open uh, cast iron open fire uh, demonstration with. Um, uh, Cornish hens, vegetables, apple pies, and it's going to be outdoors, outside, on the lot, on the concrete. <laughs> and that's the summer break camp. So far. So far. Yeah, so summer. Because so there's far. still, you know, still things to do. And the summer, summer park program and is so coming the, back. But yep. It, so the yeah. summer park program is a separate thing, and it's, we put a little twist on it. It's called Park of the Week program. Instead of having our staff be at all the different parks, we, uh, I, I, you know, it's, it's a. What I wanted it to look like is that the entire staff is at one park, seven parks in seven weeks. So for the entire week, they're at one park, and. Uh, trying to navigate getting transportation of kids to other areas to that park of the week. It, we couldn't shake it out this soon. It's going to happen probably on the next summer uh, park of the week program, but um, we, we'll have special guests for that too. Um, we have the uh, coach Moore with his uh, Sandusky Blue Street team will be coming. Uh, Sandusky Artisans, Artists with Hearts Projects will be there. Erie Metro Parks again, the Now Mobile, and the Eating Good in the Neighborhood. And then on Fridays, it'll be up to the staff. It's called Fun Fridays, so they will come up with their own uh, fun activities. And then at summer break camp at Mills, we are going to have what we call Field Trip Fridays. And so on Fridays, uh, we can, and, and that's still in the works, but to arrange to have the kids that go to the to this um, summer break camp at Mills program. They go on field trips on Fridays, and it could be local, like Toffs and the Merry-Go-Round Merry Museum, Maritime Museum, Children's Museum, and maybe out to Boots and Grasses in Berlin, in, uh, Berlin Heights to see some horses and bunnies and fishing. <laughs> but that's, that's what's up and coming. It's, cool. it's a lot, yeah. and it could be more. There is more because we have safety down oh, yeah. <laughs> in the back end, in the back there in the parking lot. Right. 
So Safety Town, we're what, looking uh, at, oh, okay. question? What, not a question, I just want, what a great building Mill School is. Yes. And, and such a, a nice addition and, mm -hmm. you know, when you look for things to happen and, and then they do, yep. I, I think it's really a, a neat thing. Yeah. And, you know, we can keep an eye on the net over across the way too, so. <laughs> Possibly become a permanent place for a rec, or the way we set it up, it can't be. Speaking of a rec, have, have we like thought about like a rec center type thing or something like that? Yeah, three to five. Our, our, what I what I share with with the public is that we're at meals for the next three to five years until we have our permanent site of of Rex. where the new Rec community, community center, center will be right. Um, Would that be one? I, I don't see that, but that's me. Yeah, and that's that's up for. I mean, yeah, that's a that's a planning. Well, I mean, we just got in a week ago to to Mills, so you know, going through that building, and yeah, we're using it for recreation right now. Now, is it a state of the art facility that? It, that attends to the needs of, of the entire community. I mean, we're, we're working really well with doing the program that we've been doing, and we have a Midtown Supper Club, but... It's coming. You know, it's... Those discussions are... You just asked me on the way out. That's what, that's what I think mm -hmm. we're on the way to figure out for the next... Um, right. With the money that's been allocated uh, for that project. Oh, uh, yeah, the Cedar Point one. Yeah. Um, safety, town. safety Town, yeah. Safety Town, uh, working right now, we have not heard back from the Whiteman Weber Foundation, but I'm expecting any day to hear back on the grant that we submitted for that. We're looking at doing this year three days, August 8th, 9th, and 10th at Mills. Um, we're working with someone for a design of that will they'll go ahead and design, and then our street department will paint the grid of the street. Uh, we did a I, we did a complete uh, wish list of adding things like angled streets, a roundabout as we're getting a roundabout, um, just different things that way. Uh, the bigger picture of Safety Town is we'd like to have permanent buildings that. Um, companies and individuals can sponsor so that we could have those. We'd like it to be where it could be used as what they say in recreation world, both passive and active recreation. So we would leave it open for the public to come in. Uh, we're looking at trying to find a railroad crossing. Uh, we want to add that into the component. Uh, we've done some digging and contacted some other locations, but I'm still looking for one. Um, so that will be added to Safety Town. Um, we are working with uh, police, fire, um, Firelands Hospital. Our right now is our core group of planning for Safety Town. So it'll be, this will comprise of 8th, 9th, and 10th. It'll be half days. So they'll come in at probably 9 o'clock and they'll be out at noon. So that'll be how we plan it. The goal is to be, have a five-day Safety Town. And on Friday would be a graduation. So that's the goal long term, hopefully next year. It's going to be so cool that adults are going to want to go do it. That's right. Come into Safety Town. We Tom's going to ride his bus. He's going to hop on the bus and ride right over to Safety Town. Maybe we'll pick you up. We'll get a fire truck to pick you up, Tom. Oh, yeah. Mario, come get me. <laughs> <laughs> Safety Town something that's been going on or... It has sporadically. Um, it was always under the school before, and the person who had that supplement when they retired, they never filled a supplement before you were there, Sean. That, that predates me. Yeah. And then the school does what they call a kindergarten roundup, which was more educational based than safety based. So Firelands took, um, they did a safety day where they first did it at um, Dorn Park. And then we moved it down the following year, we moved it in the parking lot at the old um, city hall. And then COVID hit. And then when COVID hit, they didn't have it for two years. So um, talks then, be, then I, I was in charge of Safety Town in Elyria, so I kind of got involved with it. And then that's when we opted to go something more, looking at more permanent facility. 
60 years ago, my dad was on the Snusky Police Force, and he was in charge of it yep. when it was at Osborne. Yep. We went through that, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yeah. <laughs> but we talk about it every time you well, bring up Safety Town. People are like, I remember. Everybody <laughs> remembers their memories of Safety Town, and we want to do to reestablish those memories. Great. Safety Town. What's that? I didn't go to You didn't go to Safety Town? <laughs> You can go. No, you you can to come. We'll, hey, I'm, I can't. You're excited. You can come. Join us for Safety Town. <laughs> oh. Oh. What's, what's the age? Is it just oh, wow. kindergarten? Yeah, we'll do kindergarten and probably first grade so that we, we can go, like, we'll probably do five, six, maybe seven, depending on the individuals. Um, and we'd eventually like to do some additional programming throughout the year if we have it permanent. I know some places, their safety towns, they even do CPR classes for older kids. So it's something that you can continue to teach that safety component. And that's what we'd like to build ours up to. We did like a Camp 911 for a few years too. Couple, yeah, we did. And that was where they did from police, police to, fire. to fire and then, yeah. Awesome. Did you want me to Question. talk? Question? Oh. Do you think about doing like hills and bridges on it, or is that kind of out of question? Well, at this point, we probably won't be doing it since our house, our, our home at Mills is temporary. But um, I know the person that is in the process of maybe doing the building, he's talking about bridges and those types of things when we find a permanent home for it. We just want to make it as realistic for kids so that when they go from the small town into the big town, that they can experience those types of things. So they can get lost on the streets of St. Yeah. Town and Sandusky like everyone One ways, lost and, you know. <laughs> because of the angles. Yep. Um, Do you want, you want me to take the next one? It's up to you, just enough. Okay, yeah. I'll take the next one. Um, this one is Paper District Marina. Uh, we had a meeting on Tuesday, uh, with the uh, this is in regards to touch a truck on the second. Um, there was um, some current concerns brought to the the attention of the committee because of the construction on MIGS, and even though the contractor said that they would be able to be off of the street for that day, it looks like the street will be only stone. It won't be paved. So, and it is only would have one way at, one lane, correct, Jason? One, probably, at, at that time, it's it's still up in the air, but it could be yeah. just one lane northbound on, on banks during that right. August time. So, the concern was, was brought to the committee that we need to probably find another home for this year as the safety concerns about with the this, this stone and the number of strollers, wagons, et cetera, those types of things. Turning so, trucks into the Yeah, turning trucks lot. in, into the, into the uh, parking lot, et cetera. So we met, there were a couple sites that were suggested. Um, one was Shoreline Park using Water Street, but Next year, Water Street is proposed to be under construction, so we'd have to find another new location. Um, we had talks of possibly using Orlando Pace and, and working with the schools. And then we did go back and visit Paper District Marina, which we know when we did leave there, we left there because of its size. But um, we went over and revisited it, and we are thinking that maybe we'll go back there, but using Shoreline and Water Street, and actually starting touch a truck at Water Street, and then moving it down towards the marina. Um, one thing that we uh, have decided that in past when we had had it at um, Paper District Marina, any of the community agencies were up on the hill. We're opting not to bring them on the hill. We didn't think they got as much many people visit them, so they were, we were going to 
put them right down into the parking lot, intermix them. So um, with Shoreline 2, with the, the new curbs, some of the big boats and trucks probably aren't going to be able to make that curb. So that's why we then added on Water Street so that we can use both sides of Water Street. Um, another concern was the fire department. They have to have access in and out in case there's a fire. So we would place them on Water Street as well. So. Tentatively, we're looking at that. We have to get a, it's, we're gonna get a, a go from the rest of the committee by the end of the week, and then we'll start readjusting our um, information for that. Basically be that metal tech building right. north all the way to the water. So we could also, the marina was also a, a bonus because we could bring in the boats and right. have the uh, carry, like Pat Thompson's <coughs> personnel carrier, the, mm -hmm. the, what was that, from World War II? Yeah, yeah, World War II. Um, and have that as part of the event, as we have in years past, too, and SFD's boat. So it should be a... We'll have to get Victoria back over there to help. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so. Um, and then the last thing I have on uh, new business is volunteer opportunities. So at the bottom, you'll see the Easter egg hunt. Um, Basically, the, the time frame isn't all the way until 11.30. It's actually till 10.07 a.m., 10.08 a.m. when all the eggs are picked up. Um, it's usually our fastest event that we put together. Uh, we go and set the eggs out around 8.15, 8.30. So if um, anyone can help with the egg disbursement, that's uh, something that Rotary has been great to help out with um, for that. And the schools. Yeah, and the schools with uh, leading ladies and gentlemen's club have filled all the eggs for us. So there was some candy that didn't fit, but we'll get that okay. out there. So um, that's one spot where we could use some help. And then next week, the um, Masters Walleye Circuit Fishing Tournament will be here uh, at the Shelby Street Boat Launch. It's a pretty big, pretty big fishing tournament. First one of the year, the docks are in over there. The water's turned on at, at the, uh, at the uh, bait company, Sussex Bait Company. So we've got a couple dates there, and that would be Friday and Saturday of next week. Uh, there's two different times. One would one time would be in the morning, 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. That's to help get cars parked. Uh, we need two to three volunteers. More would be great if we had them. And then also Friday and Saturday from 2.30 to 5.30 p.m. Uh, would, would be at the weigh-in, and I, uh, we're planning on having the weigh-in at the Paper District Marina. It worked out well for that large tournament we had in 2020. So we'll do the weigh-in at the Paper District Marina. So that those time frames are 2.30 to 5.30, and they need three to four volunteers, but any more could, could definitely be, be used. It's a great way to showcase Sandusky and our, our amenities down there, and also uh, it's, it's a great tournament. I mean, it's a fishing tournament. That's why the little city is here on the bay. <laughs> any questions on that? Sure. Does the fishing tournament only include boating? Um, yeah, this is this is a shoreline tournament, so it's it's yeah, basically they're all registered, um, but like semi-pro, pro. pro uh, right. There are and I'll, we'll be releasing a list of all the other fishing tournaments. There's about a dozen uh, throughout the whole uh, summer, throughout the whole season. So we'll be putting that list out here pretty soon too. Have been any uh, talk movement? about uh, improving the parking down there for the voters? Because, you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. Are you going into detail? Just the, um, the grant. We, we, we had applied for a grant to do both a re overhaul of the, of the facility there, which would be the parking okay. lot. It was one component of it, and a concrete new concrete ramp was the other component of that. And then there was also talk to, or actually the, the grant proposal was to replace the building, I think. We heard back from them. We did not get that grant at the time. It's a two-year two -year grant, so we would look to do those improvements or apply for the grant again, but actually we got a lot of feedback on what we needed to change for that grant, uh, which would be almost, you know, make it a bigger ask, which you don't usually hear that for, for grants, but um, we look to overhaul, do that uh, for, it'd be next year we'd be able to apply for that one. Okay, just just for those that aren't sure what I'm talking about, what I suggest is that the uh, the parking down there is tight. From when that was built many many years ago, the boats are significantly bigger, 
And although you've got major plans for big changes, in order for people to, to, to have an enjoyable experience putting the boats in there, uh, you need to widen the parking spaces. Quiet as it's kept, I'll add to this that the uh, uh, green greenery you have, green space you have between the aisles uh, is, first of all, I don't think it adds a whole lot of beauty that matters, but it does make a difference in terms of them trying to pull those 35 foot trailers through. If it was all black top and the spaces were wider, they'd have a much easier uh, uh, ability to get their boats in, they wouldn't be so tight. Uh, it would be an overly uh, parking, and they should be able to pull straight through to get out at the end of the day. Everybody, it, it's simple. I've actually done the parking directly. Yeah. So uh, that's what I'm talking about. You can direct the cars in, you can direct them in one at a time in the dark as best possible. Uh, but when they leave, they don't leave in order. So trying to back and jockey those, those, those boats back and forth between their lives in the narrow space that you provided them, uh, ultimately it will make people decide not to come here. Uh, I just have a, my own thoughts about everything we do is it needs to be first class. It needs to be totally customer oriented and we figure out a way to do you know, what we can do to provide the best experience and you guys are the ones that set the priorities. This is just something I'm bringing to the table. Uh, when I have boaters, fishermen, not my idea, it was theirs, talking about the problems they have, and I can see they were legitimate. The boats are wider, our spaces are too narrow, and so just appreciate you putting it in and wait till next year. You, you can't do it, you can't make them, you only make one first impression. And as they have do their improvements in Huron, they'll start competing for these, for what we've got. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the facilities, we may not get well, we may not get as much repeat business as we like. Just something to add to the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. I want to add, hey Barb, if you could add to the um, spring break camp at Mills and the summer part of the week program, the last day of both of those. July 29th, and we will also have the Community Collaboration Day at the pier on that same day, and I believe it would be like four to six, wouldn't it? Yep. Something like that. And um, that's where all the park programs and... 729? Yep, 729. And then also um, our Juneteenth, we are still getting into the final plans of that at the pier on June 19th, which is also Father's Day this year. Um, and that'll be like from 12 to 6, but I wanted to maybe speak with Devin, who is the Proud Fathers organization, and see what we can, uh, how we can collaborate okay. and get some dads at this event. We can work something out. I'm sure. So we are in our open discussion part of the meeting. <laughs> um, Kids Fest, speaking of announcements, Kids Fest is Saturday, May 21st. That flyer is now out. On social, please share. Um, it's back at the Snusky Bay Pavilion. Back to you know how how the event has has been in years past, and we're we're very very much looking forward to having that event back. It's it's a great great thing for the community. Um, bring a canned good to get entry. I know that sometimes gets forgotten that that they do a canned good drive at the at the front there. So um, May twenty first. So that's why we said that the Butch Wagner weekend, uh, Memorial weekend at, at the golf course, everything's gonna be see. happening the week before Memorial Day. Um, and also, we're getting into the other summer pl uh, planning, which would include the Mama Collins track meets, so we'll get those dates set and out to everybody, and Barb gave me her gymnastics schedule, so we'll have that put together. Anything else for open discussion? Are you in the peanut gallery now? Is that yeah. Would, oh, okay. Do you want to speak so the m microphone will pick you up? <laughs> Hello, my name is Matt Good. Um, I've been living in Sandusky, Ohio for 28 years, and I've steadily you know, been at the skate park. 
uh, I've had a lot, you know, of ups and downs, being able to skate, being able not to skate. I am a new father, so it's actually <coughs> been a little harder um, to get out there. There's a lot of kids down there I see, and I've actually not, not really wanting to bring it up, but I've bumped into them, not hurt them, but, um, you know, just expanding the area to create a zone for kids and have them, you know, have stepping stones uh, to lead on to the bigger ramps would be, like, excellent. It would give them an opportunity to not hurt themselves as much and us the opportunity to skate freely. <laughs> um, that's all I have. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Tim Schwanger, 362 Sheffield Way. First of all, I've noticed um, on the city's website that the comments from the public during this meeting does not, they do not make it into the uh, meeting minutes. Is there a way to change that or is there a reason why the public's comments aren't included in? I, we can, I mean, is that, I don't is, have is that policy, Jason, or is there, is there a way to change that? Or? Yeah, it's on the yeah, I know it gets on TV, TV, you know, on the video. Yeah, on the video, but I'm just wondering, you know, every other committee that you go to, if the public has comments, the, those comments find their way into the minutes for future reference for city commission, or if you guys want to go back and, you know, look mm -hmm. at the minutes. Sure. Know, for yeah, we could use the video to even pull those comments, but I know Barb's there taking notes. I didn't. Get okay, well, I went through all the agenda, all the minutes and all the agendas of past meetings, and I don't see any public comments in in the minutes. Okay. So I don't know if that was some a procedure that was missed or skipped or, you know, just uh, if it was in the policy not to do that or if that If there could... are any public minute or public comments, Barb does include them in the minutes and I then trans, I scribe them. So okay. I don't, those, I don't, yeah. see it. I don't see it in the minutes. That's, it, that's why it would be, they would be noted anywhere. A lot, sometimes if it's made on a, on a specific subject, they'll be there. Like the last minutes they were placed that were anybody who spoke that was listed and any suggestion it was included in the minutes. Sometimes we don't even ha we don't have public comment to place in the minutes. Must have overlooked it. Yeah. March March will have uh, you and Crystal had spoke so they'd be on there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So so not to I'll hold you too much longer, but um, I was I don't know if y'all saw Channel Five last night at eleven <laughs> o'clock, but they had a uh, one of their investigative reporters come down and do a segment on the skateboard park. There was probably. Oh, for the bad, well, it wasn't bad weather. It was kind of windy, kind of cold, but there was probably 15 kids down there, and what they did was they interviewed three or four of the older youth. I mean, the one guy was like in his 30s, and it was a good, it was a good segment. Uh, they talked about uh, the condition of the park right now, so, and, you know, and, and how it's fallen into disrepair, and there's concerns with nails sticking out. The one kid said he was skateboarding, and... All of a sudden, he's off his skateboard, he's laying on the concrete, and his skateboard is still up at the top of the ramp because the skateboard got caught on the nail that was, was sticking out. I would encourage this board to put out some kind of notice or put some kind of flyer on the skateboard park and have uh, a meeting with, this, with the kids that are down there all the time. Uh, again, these are younger adults. The other kid was like 24 years old and have them come in and tell you exactly what they'd like to have. Now, during that segment last night on Channel uh, 5, uh, Mr. Whoopser was actually, uh, did supply a rendition of what someone would like to see the park look like, but in talking with some of the kids that are down there, they would like to have a concrete park where they're not having to worry every five years of nails sticking out. It needs to be a more of a permanent structure made out of concrete, if you, if you take some time to look at, just Google skate parks in Ohio or in the country, and you'll see most of them are going to concrete uh, skateboard parks instead of, instead of the wooden or metal structures. They last, they last forever. You know, it's a one-time shot, lasts forever. And as uh, Mr. Good said, you know, a park that would have, you know, a section over here for the, the littler folks, Intermediate and then the higher, you know, <coughs> the higher end uh, uh, kids would be uh, fantastic moving into the future. Again, I told them, I told them the other night. I said, "You guys need to organize. You know, mm -hmm. if, one, if just one person comes down here and talks, that's good. But you need to have more, more, you know, there's security in numbers, so to speak, is what I told them." Uh, shout out to the city's industrial team down there fixing the ramp today. 
Yep. Well, okay. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's all right that you know I guess it takes Channel Five at eleven to get something done. That's you know that's fine, but I think maybe more it needs to be looked at more often. Not not rely on, on, rely on Channel Five at eleven to you know to get something done. Um, has this board been asked for a wish list from the city manager or, or Jason on what we'd like to see this year or in the coming years? as far as the use of the federal relief funds, that the, nine, the $18 million that we just received from the federal government. And I know the skate park is on that list. But Tennis uh, courts, I believe, are on the list as well. Yeah, the skate, the skate park. Rec Center is on the yeah. list as well, yeah. Which, how many more? Tennis courts. Tennis courts. Recreation Center. Okay, part of the Recreation Center. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's great. The other item, the third item I have is the Make Street Pier, and I, and I know uh, a couple of years ago, I think the city manager budgeted through the rec board and the recreation fund $30,000, $35,000 to redo the Meg Street Pier, the east-west portion. There were, and, and I don't want to speak over you, but there was cap, I think there was capital dollars dedicated to fixing the, the, the western wall of the, of the Meg Street yeah, Pier. The part running east and west. And that did not, that did not happen. Jason, do you know, has, has the city manager given that do it to a different department now or is it is I'm, I can look into that I'll let uh, I can let you know hey, could not, you please yeah because I, I know that there was some delays that were regarded or had something to do with you know with the pandemic and COVID and that sort of thing that was okay. well there might be a possibility that he actually gave that project over to the Maroose brothers who still have intentions to privately develop part of the battery park area so it might yeah, even right maybe be part of that project. But I was down there the other day, and, and it's in bad, I don't think it can wait much longer. I mean, it's been that, that way. It keeps getting worse every year, every year, every year, just like the skate park. So it's, something needs to be done. And I, and I can follow up too with the city manager if you want to do the same thing. It's up, you know, it's up to you. The, the paper district marina, did we get a grant to do that? Does anybody remember if we got a grant to do the paper district marina, or was it all done through the uh, TIF agreement with the Chesapeake. Yeah, Have you know offhand? Was before, I mean, All that was built in 2004? Five? five yeah. Five, yeah. Six, yeah, when it was. Do you remember so, Dave? You don't remember Dave? Oh. Yeah. I, I think it's a city. Yeah. But yeah, uh, you can punch it in on that corner. Just punch in. That's yeah, I did that, but no, nothing comes up after 2017. There's no information on the city's website past 2017, you all put, the stuff. Did you put uh, paper district? I did, yes. So nothing, nothing comes up. I pulled up some stuff on from uh, 13. Well, the reason why I ask is because there, there's, there was talk at the last meeting about, you know, adding more seasonal dockage versus transient. And I think this committee asked for, for more information. Well, sh well, I don't know if you ever got the information or not. Next thing I know, it's on the city commission agenda for this past meeting to go to more seasonal versus transient. And I don't know if any of you guys all watched the city commission meeting, but uh, Charlie Murray, uh, who has the dock of the Bay of Arena, which is part of the Murray uh, development there, the law offices, stood up and, at this podium and said, you know, that, that his marina is opposed to adding more seasonal because now you're competing with the local private industry of boating and, um, and dockage. So I don't know if you guys have been taken out of the loop of that, and now it's in the hands of the city commission, you know, away from you, from you guys. But as far as I know, you guys were never further consulted on the idea of adding additional seasonal dockage to that paper district, district marina. So I don't know if that's something you guys want to try to stay involved in or if, if it's just take, been taken away from this board. The last thing is you talked about the summer program, and it's been a couple of years, you know, since I've had the um, pickup baseball, mm -hmm. and I still want to do that. Perfect. So let me know, uh, you know, of course, I supply all the bats, the balls, the bases are there at Heron Park, which I, I thank you. And I think last year I talked to this board about doing something with adding whatever special sand they use for ball diamonds mm -hmm. at home plate, third base, first base, and second base. And I know that the city has, has turned over the dirt already for that field. There's already kids using it. I went by the other week, and it must be a local team that's using it for a practice field. 
but those bases, those areas need to be taken care of as far as additional special sand. We, you know more about it than I do. Yeah, a lot of times you, you know, on a ball field, those are all the hot spot areas. Yeah. Tim, you're exactly right. They take the most wear and tear. What I would say on a field like that, you, we probably benefit more from having, they almost make like a rubber mat for home plate because inevitably, no matter, unless you maintain it daily, and I do right. mean daily, you're going to have that. Home plate's probably the worst. It gets mm -hmm. dug out the most. But if you have a mat, in the two batters boxes, mm -hmm. that'll make the biggest effect. And then, honestly, with the, pro I'm just guessing how much it's used. Uh, you know, periodically come through, and you basically got to redrag it and try to drag dirt into those second and third base holes where people slide and that kind of thing. But home plate pitchers mounds are always the worst, and one of the ways you could, uh, you know, cut down on maintenance time, but also make sure there's not a divot there because those get pretty big. Is uh, is putting in there? They make some mats that are just okay. for that. I was not aware of that. That's yeah. That, that, that's yeah. that's great. I I mean, even if the city would dump a little bit of that special sand, you know, at the field. really, it's a clay sand mix. And, right. and what'll happen? But inevitably, what happens is over the course of a few weeks, a few days, a few whatever, yeah. it'll disperse, whether it be from nature or from uh, from play. Mm -hmm. The only way to keep the other areas you're talking about is it has to be dragged. Mm -hmm. It has to be hand dragged or hand raked. So one of the things. If you go to any high school game in the area, you're typically going to see the home team after the game's over. Every you know, a couple kids go to every base, go to home plate, whatever. They rake it up, and uh, you know, and then home plate in the mound usually gets um, it's, it's clay. It's almost solid clay that you tap into place, whether it's a powder clay or clay bricks. It's so like at our field every year we replace on the ball field. You put clay bricks into the batter's box because they'll last longer, but they still wear down because obviously ours gets used a lot, but. Really, that's the only way to take care of the other bases is either by hand or by dragging. And But home plate, which I think is probably your biggest impact yep, area, it is. I, I would recommend a, a mat system. Okay. Because you're not too bad. Now, Sean, I, Sean, I noticed that a lot of the parks that are used, I don't, I don't know how I want to put this, by the, by the school teams mm -hmm. and that, they actually have a mound of, of that clay off to the side. Oh, so yeah. That, you know, even, you know, and, and mm -hmm. I, li I, live, I live way out the west end, but I'm in the area of mm Heron -hmm. Park quite a bit. Right. Even if the city would initially take care of it the, the initial time, right. do you know do the do the filling of the different bases? Mm -hmm. If you could, if the city could dump some of that clay off to the side, I would be willing to volunteer to help maintain it if I see a low spot. Yeah, because that's take a shovel. Honestly, that's because, what we do. Because I've got the tampers. I, yeah. I got the tamper at home, so I got my own equipment. Right. So really, honestly, that's what we do. Is you're right. Most most schools have a small pile. You know, size of half, yeah. the size of the truck load. Right, it's there. If I could, if you, I could, you're taking a five-gallon bucket and, or or the sure. gator, and you're dumping in enough to, to to level things out a little bit, and it's a constant, constant thing, sure. depending on how much field's used. Right, and really, when it rains, one of the things you'll find is it it tells you where the low spots are because mm -hmm. water will find that low yeah. spot, and you sure. you go back and backfill. But yeah, I mean, but I, I hear your request is really just the next time the city gets dirt for the ball fields. Is to maybe have a small cash yeah. put there. See, in my in my younger days, I would have done a covert operation and taken a five gallon bucket and gone to one of the other fields at two o'clock in the morning and then shoveled some of theirs and, and used it. But you've outgrown that, though. But I, I've outgrown that. So yeah. So. <laughs> so Tim, would you be willing to travel with the Park of the Week program? So if I got you the the parks that we will be at, what week we'll be there? Would you? I could try to do probably three days a week. Okay, I I well, I, how about I just email you where we're going to be at what week, and then you can let me know. Yeah, um, if you, well, you know, definitely here in part, because I, got, I have I know, that's, your, <laughs> that, that's the last week. That's where we'll be at in, in the last week of July. So maybe we can incorporate a, a whole three-day. Okay. And, I, and I'll be more welcome to if you ever want to walk the field or something like that, just because I'm a longtime baseball guy. Right. Coached and played most of my life. Uh, just to walk the field for a few, just – you know, here we might do this, do that kind of thing for, for somebody volunteering like yourself that might be helpful or an easy way to do it. Okay. All right. Hey, thank you for your time. I appreciate yeah, it. Of course. <coughs> Sherry. Sherry. I am Wesley Poole, 1939. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't apologize. I can't help it. I was a citizen before I was a commissioner. <laughs> this whatever way where you where you'd like to uh, just some observations this uh, what you just talked about dealing with that field obviously we have the expertise in those we to be done I would ask you to ask yourselves why we haven't done that 
and I'm not sure anymore what your role is. I've got staff here, I've got folks with expertise, and just my message is I think we should do everything. It should be excellent. We need to have the best facilities that we can possibly buy. And the recommendations coming from you folks need to, I would like, I would like to think that you would give us the recommendations for the best it could be. And if at some point this, this commission doesn't want to pay for that, we'll let you know. But for him to be talking about problems in the ballpark, and you're sitting here with the answer to the question, it just made me think, well, wait a second, what, why is that? And I just appreciate you guys give some thoughts about that. Um, and I realize there's only so much money in the budget, um, but you guys don't know how much that is. So, the concept, so you should be trying to give us, give the citizens uh, the best advice, the best, best product that, that we can have. Uh, and, and sending those recommend, recommendations to, to the commission about what you think we ought to do, and then we can work out the details of what we actually think think that we can uh, can uh, afford to do is is really I think what the message is I'm trying to tell you. Uh, I truly believe you know uh, as long as I've got your attention, uh, I've taught and all, Jason's heard this from me before. He's very patient about listening to me. Uh, the uh, I think the basketball courts are too small. I think. Seventh grade basketball courts for 19 to 20 year old kids is too small. We should have uh, at least a high school size court. If for nothing else, uh, it'll support the uh, high school kids coming up. And I recognize that if you go ask the kids, they'll say, no, we don't want any bigger, we'll get tired. Well, kids will also tell you they don't want vegetables and they want ice cream all day long. Adults have to say, hey, what do we want for our community? And what are the benefits of doing A, B, or C? And you don't have to agree with me that what I said I'd, I'd like to see, but I think our facilities should be uh, numerous and based on what we can get for people to, uh, uh, to participate in. And I've taken enough of your time. Appreciate you guys volunteering. And um, have a good evening. I came in here by accident to come get a proclamation <laughs> I have to read. I just saw through. See, maybe you should have a wall there. I saw through the window. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Wes. Thanks, Wes. Sherry? I'm not coming up there. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> I just want to thank Mr. Coatley, oh. Jason, uh, Zach Moots, and whoever else has stepped up and started finally going out and reaching out to the AMVETS personally. The AMVETS is coming around the corner. We have awesome people, nothing against the past, but some of the past is still stepping up and still volunteering that love the kids. There's a turnaround. I'm hearing all kinds of positive about this group Great. and about you guys stepping up and at least talking to them and asking them. They need support and they need other things. Yeah. It's a city function. It's not a school function. Right. It's city. We need that. We lack that. For years, people went there and sat in their cars whatever age, just like Jackson Street here, and just watch. They didn't know who was playing. They just watch. Yeah. So thank you because it is noticed, and they do need the support and the help. Yeah, but it's really good lines of communication right now, I think, better than at least during my time. And very much like you said, I mean, um, obviously we're all pretty much kid-centered, you know, centered. But I think the other part, it's bigger than that. It's not just a school thing, like you said. It is a community thing and an opportunity to, you know, I, I – Lent my time because I'm, I'm a baseball fan, I'm a baseball coach, obviously I'm a sports guy, but no, thank you for, for mentioning that, and, and we look forward to what they're doing. I mean, Mother Nature's going to cooperate here one day soon. I was supposed to be at one in Tiffany today. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Here's another thing that I want to let you know, that my son, my grandson now, who is 16, and he's varsity, he, my son, or my grandson was brought up by a dad coach a dad coach, a dad coach. But when they get up to Zach Moots in ninth grade, they kind of don't know right. what's expected. Mm -hmm. And we need to get our Sandusky kids mm -hmm. geared into Sandusky baseball mm -hmm. because we're experiencing this right now and you know what mm -hmm. I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. We're experiencing these kids don't know. Well, they, have, they have a lot to learn when they get if to If you us. don't have money to, to travel or to do a travel mm -hmm. walk, and do things like that or have a professional coach luckily on your team to guide you and show you those things, you're lost when you come into right. ninth grade. Mm -hmm. 
and I was going to mention that they are still looking for coaches. If anybody is interested, anybody that maybe does pick up baseball on the side would want to coach. Uh-huh. Uh, Amvets baseball has <laughs> t-ball, and 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 they they can use coaches, and and it's it's rewarding. I mean, they're fingerprinting. Yeah. This group is on it. This board. And just to piggyback off of what you were saying, um, not only is that an issue with baseball, it's with other sports as well. Mm-hmm. My son with wrestling, um, just the transition from an outside club going into the school system, it's yes. completely different. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a hard transition for some kids, you know. So we've been talking, um, myself, uh, Xavier Dickerson and um, Darrell Valiant, they are the um, – the coaches of the Sandusky Lions Club, who um, my son wrestled for this year. They just started a, a club this year or whatever, and they actually did pretty good. Hmm. Um, took It started out with, what, about 40 kids or so, and um, by the end of the season had, I think, eight kids that made it to state. Hmm. And out of those eight kids, I think one of them was, I mean, all of them were first-year wrestlers. One of them was a second-year wrestler, so... They're they're um, they're starting out, and um, we've had conversations with Shannon and um, about you know kind of blending the programs together, but there's always been a disconnect there somewhere. So just like how you said the transition, we need to figure out a way where there's not a transition point where right. it's all pretty much like under right. one umbrella, even though they can still have their own club and the right. events can still be mm-hmm. their own entity but it'll all be the Sandusky brand in right. a sense. You understand? Yep. Those coaches would be willing to do that for us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I heard it. Definitely. So, and I, I just wanted to piggyback on what you were saying because it just made me think about it when you were saying how, you know, your grandson had a transition coming from, or, or you were saying how kids were transitioning coming in to coach Moots from dad coaches at Anvets or whatnot. And I, like I said, I can see the same thing happening with, you know, wrestling, because that's something that I'm, you know, I'm a part of, so. Yeah. But, well, yeah, yeah. They're both, more the better. Yeah, you know, just, really, it's really about, like you said, it's uh, it's about open communication and, and, and everybody rowing upstream together. Definitely. And that's that's the thing that we're doing, and I, I'm I'm excited. You know, we've, we've talked to a lot of good people since, you know, the pandemic has slowed down a little bit. Uh, you know, we've talked to a lot of good people who are trying to do some really good things, and, and we're there as a resource. I think that's kind of we, how we – we as coaches in the school, we view ourselves as a resource to help in any way we can, you know, and, and that's what it's all about. Here's the thing, is though. it a mural, a thing of the past? It, yes. It may see yeah. itself as a resource, but do other people see the resources as available? That's the thing. It's, it's, you know, and that's what I was saying. As far as there's a disconnect there, we got to figure out a way to make those resources yeah, to maximize appear. all of our resources. Yeah, or even appear can. available because some right. people may not feel like the resources are available right. for them, or, yeah. you know. And, so. and really we're open to, to sit down with anybody, you know, in terms of uh, facilities and different things to try to, to you know, we want our gyms full. Right, right. And they, and they usually are. Right, I mean, if we, <laughs> we even had a conversation right. um, a few months right. ago about it right. because, like, yeah. they, had to tri- they had to change um, gyms because they started out at uh, next level, mm-hmm. but they grew too big. And they, didn't, they didn't have enough yeah. room, so they ended up going to the adrenaline uh, gym down mm-hmm. there, and that's where they've mm-hmm. been. But they shared the gym with, you know, um, other, folks. other people down mm-hmm. there. Sure. and. It was like the conversation that came up was like, well, what are they doing with Jackson School? Right. Oh, they're they're doing re- bitty wrestling over there. And it's like, right. we're Sandusky as well. Right. How come we can't? Well, we, we actually, you know, we actually run three, two, just so you know, we run three things out of Jackson in the wintertime currently. Well, yeah, well, Cheerleading, well, middle school wrestling, and bitty wrestling. So we run three full programs. Right. But, but we can talk. I mean, it, it was more like, why would they have to separate, even though it's this, this, this right. the, these kids are going to be Sandusky kids no matter what. Oh, yeah. Up in the right. city. So why would we have to train them? Outside of a Sandusky facility, as if they're not a part of the well, Sandusky. But, 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 but again, being part of the school, being part of the school district, there's there's just like it look, travel baseball, travel softball, travel basketball, all those things. Um, there's the things that we do to try to support as many different programs as we can, mm-hmm. and then there's all the different opportunities that people have out there because we all know travel sports in the last 15 years has exploded. You know, Definitely. and there's a million opportunities for kids, almost too, almost too many. Right. You know, and um, you could, you drive by uh, Sports Force any weekend, you can see why travel sports is such a big deal. Definitely. It's, it's always full. It's busy. And I think that's the other part is the one thing that we, and, and why I'm excited about the, the community rec center is 
indoor facilities are, are, are at a minimum in our area, and that's one of the things we struggle with more than anything else. And so trying to, especially in the, in the middle of a season, you know, to try to take care of every single entity is so, such a challenge, as you know. Yeah. But I, I think the real part is, is that we're willing to do whatever we can to enhance and help, and that includes facilities. So. Maybe at the beginning of the season or before it starts, get the coaches, like have Zach come in and coach the coaches on mm -hmm. how Which we've done. he does it. Yep. And, and like the yeah. rest or make whatever. It we did that That's once, and then, uh, you know, we're, we're probably going back to events one more time before their season starts. Uh, so that's part of our, our goal is to, again, showing people who are really dedicated and want to help kids and want to work with kids, you know, show them, you know, what does 30 minutes of practice look like? What does an hour look like? How do you maximize that? Here are some of the fundamental drills. Here are some of the, here's some of the verbiage, you know, why is it important to cut off man and how do you stand? How do you receive the ball? And I mean, there's a myriad of things you can go over, right. but, but really it is about that alignment, that vertical alignment. And, uh, you know, that's our goal. And, and we, we want to be part of that. We think it's important to be part of that. And, uh, you know, we have a lot to offer. You insert, you know. insert the plug for the Sandusky Elementary Athletics and Activities. Yeah. We, we run well. a lot of programming, a lot of programming. And, and, again, we run a lot of it because there's a need for it, hmm. you know, yeah. obviously. Is fingerprinting and background checks costly yeah. to the person, the individual? Yes, depending on where they get it. Mm -hmm. About 75 bucks. Mm -hmm. I have to do whatever. Mm -hmm. Every what? Three. Yep. So that's what they would pay to be a coach at Ambus? About seven Not necessarily. depends on what organization yeah. they're working through. There's different levels and different organizations who do different mm -hmm. background checks. The one we're talking about would be one through the state. But there's other organizations, USA, County Sheriff, yeah. USA, you know, like one comes to mind, USA softball or Little League baseball. Mm -hmm. They A lot of times they have their own so background check system. Yeah, yeah, it correct. does. And different levels. Of. It's an awesome thing that they have finally started doing that. Mm -hmm. It's quite the open discussion. That was good stuff. Any other? Yeah, me to speak. Anything else? <laughs> you never say anything. <laughs> That's good. Motion to adjourn. Whoever wants to make the travel to Mills, we are going to next. Did we? Uh, I'm not going. No? <laughs>